this morning. My name is Jay, and this is my colleague Zikan. Uh, we both work in uh, the Esri's raster development team. Uh, this morning, we're going to talk about uh, how to uh, automate uh, the distributed raster analysis using the image server REST API. So I assume that I guess uh, most of you here only heard about this di distributed raster analysis feature in this conference. Anybody in the audience that has already been using 10.5 to uh, utilize this distributed raster analysis feature? Nobody? Great. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a quick overview of what raster analysis is and how to set it up uh, in your own, own premier's de deployment or in, the, in, your, in, your, in your own cloud infrastructure. And then I'll hand it over to Zikan. He will show you some uh, simple example that uses uh, raster analysis REST API. So what is distributed rust analysis? Basically, this is a new series of uh, uh, system service that we release in 10.5 ArcGIS server. ArcGIS, image ser uh, ArcGIS server that license was image server extension. So uh, it can utilize the uh, multi-server cluster and a distributed raster storage to uh, perform distributed raster analysis or processing using your existing spatial analysis model and uh, raster functions. <coughs> And it works with your existing imagery data. If you already have image service published, you can use it as input for the raster analysis uh, tasks. And alternatively, you can also convert your existing data in various format that is supported by ArcGIS to this distributed raster uh, storage, and then so that it will improve your uh, distributed raster analysis performance. And also, it can be scaled up and down uh, based on the size of your job. If you have a large image, you can spawn up a lot of uh, parallel instances to process your job. And if you, sm you have a, if you have a smaller, a smaller image to do, and then uh, the server can scale down to just use uh, the appropriate number of uh, parallel instances to process your job. The fundamental concept of raster analysis, the most important elements is this new optimized raster format we uh, developed. It's actually released uh, from uh, ArcGIS 10.4, and we are fully utilizing this new format now in this distributed raster analysis framework. And our, our target is to, uh, is to decrease the amount of time you spend to do large uh, processing jobs. Like for analysis work that you uh, used to spend days or months to do, or even cannot be done with one single machine, now our target is to, is to shrink the time from months to uh, weeks, uh, weeks to days, days to hours, or even minutes. So the basic idea behind it is simply as um, you use your existing spatial analysis model and raster functions, and uh, we try to split the input imagery to smaller pieces, smaller unit, what we call as bundles. And we'll spawn off a lot of uh, ArcGIS server instances that process all these bundles at the same time. And then with this uh, process definition and this uh, small unit, bundle unit, uh, we'll be able to write out the a large output imagery uh, with all these different bundles at the same time and then essentially, eventually assemble them together to give you this complete uh, imagery product. And then the final product uh, comes out of a Rust analysis will be published as image service and uh, uh, become a web imagery layer in your uh, portal uh, in your organization. So if you are to set up your own RAS analysis framework, these are the essential components you will need. You will need to install ArcGIS portal, and you need to set up a ArcGIS server site, which will be assigned the role as the hosting server. Uh, the hosting, what hosting server is basically, you will have a ArcGIS data store that contains a relational database and target database and then you register this data store with your ArcGIS server site, and then you can assign the hosting server uh, role to this server site. And then you need, to another, you need to have another server site that is also federated with your portal. That is the image server site. Uh, in 10.5, we have a separate image server extension license that you have to uh, authorize the image server with. Uh, the RAS analysis capability, the distributed RAS analysis capability is actually a part of the, uh, one of the features that provides through uh, image server. 
with image server, you can, you can uh, do this parallel processing of RAS analysis, and it can also host the result image service that was generated from uh, the RAS analysis. In order to assign an image server side the role uh, of RAS analysis, you need to register a raster data store with the image server side. The RAS data store can be a uh, file share store and it can be a cloud storage. It is a server side setting. Uh, I'll show you later on uh, in my following slides. And what it's used for is the RAS analysis will generate all its imagery output in this optimized RAS format in the RAS data store. And then it will automatically publish a image service uh, on image server uh, reference to this uh, output imagery in your RAS store. With all these components, uh, you can, you can uh, use this uh, portal and server deployment to perform your distributed RAS analysis. If you want to deploy your RAS analysis in your, in your cloud uh, infrastructure, we also provide a Amazon AWS CloudFormation template. Uh, we have two stacks, one for the basic enterprise GIS deployment, which contains the portal and hosting server and ArcGIS data store I mentioned earlier. And also we have a stack for you to deploy a standalone ArcGIS image server uh, site. And uh, there, we also have a Cloud Builder app that you install on your own machine to deploy uh, RAS analysis on uh, Microsoft Azure uh, infrastructure. And the only difference between these two uh, ways of deployment is uh, if you're trying to deploy it on Amazon, then you need to do this manual federation uh, to federate the image server with your, with your portal and you register RAS store. And if you deploy your RAS analysis in, the cloud, in this cloud platform and you'll be using the optimized uh, cloud storage, like in the S3 case, you use the S3 as your RAS store and you in the Azure case, you'll use the Azure blob storage as your RAS data store. Oops. Slides. I want to have, uh, specifically mention this concept of uh, RAS data store. Uh, if you use uh, ArcGIS data store before, and you, see, you know that this is a separate uh, install and uh, you have to actually configure with the hosting server, but the RAS data store I mentioned here is the settings that you made uh, associated with the image server. It is not part of the ArcGIS data store. It's not part of that setup. Uh, it is used by RAS analysis service to uh, store output imagery in this optimized RAS format, what we call the cloud raster format. And a RAS data store can be a simple file share directory that was, if you deploy your servers on premise and uh, you have a NAS distributed disk system, and you can use it as a raster store. And you can also utilize in the Amazon S3 and uh, Microsoft Azure blob storage to store this output image. If you go to the server's uh, manager page, you'll see this new store type keyword uh, under the data store session. You can configure more than one raster stores for image server. If there are more than one raster store configured, uh, for one single RAS analysis task, which we'll randomly pick one and uh, uh, store the output in there. And for some of the RAS analysis tasks, it also outputs feature data. That's why you'll need the hosting server, because all the feature output uh, of RAS analysis will be stored in the relation, relational database uh, that is configured with the hosting server. And the feature service will be published on the hosting server instead of the image server. And these are the new services we release that supports distributed RAS analysis um, on ArcGIS server. If you log on to the uh, ArcGIS server manager site uh, of your image server, under the system folder, you'll see these four new system services. We have a RAS analysis tool, geoprocessing service, which is the endpoint for you to access the RAS analysis REST API. Uh, you're basically submitting your distributed RAS analysis task to this geoprocessing service endpoint. And we have a raster processing image service which works as workers to process large imagery uh, analysis tasks. Uh, basically, each uh, server instance of raster processing service will be processing one bundle, one small unit of the uh, output. 
uh, with the defined uh, processing uh, model. And all the output uh, imagery that stores in CRI format and then published as image service is actually a special kind of image service. It does not have any uh, ArcGIS server socks uh, assigned to it. Instead, we use this utility service called um, raster rendering service to process any rendering request that is sent to the result, uh, sent to the image service that was generated by uh, raster analysis. Additionally, we also have this distributed worker service uh, that is used to process uh, global kind of analysis uh, that is specific to some spatial analysis uh, models. You can freely configure the number of maximum number of instances uh, for the services based on your need. Right? For example, if you have a huge image to generate, we actually did this demo in Fed UC and uh, also in the plenary this year. Uh, we have like um, uh, 10 billion, at least 10 billion pixel. It's a huge data set that was uh, covering the entire watershed of the Pen Pennsylvania state. And that gigantic image is actually 370 gig. Right? You will need a lot of uh, uh, parallel instances to process this one single image uh, at the same time. Therefore, you, in that kind of scenario, based on the uh, server number of calls that your server has, you may increase the number of instances on the raster processing service. Right, this is a uh, brief uh, look at the, the REST API um, for the REST analysis tools. If you go into the REST interface of ArcGIS server, uh, if you go into the REST analysis GP uh, service, you see a list of uh, ready to use tools there. And one of the very important tools is the generate raster, uh, generate raster tool, which takes in a raster function as input. And it actually provides you a lot of flexibility to run all kinds of uh, uh, raster processing or analysis defined by raster functions. And the raster functions we use here in the service is um, actually the same raster function you use the, in the image service REST API. In the image service REST API, you have this concept of rendering rules. And for the rendering rule, you, have, uh, you can define uh, JSON raster function objects. Basically defines how you want to do hill shade, how you want to do uh, clipping, how you want to do uh, color map, how you want to do um, all kinds of uh, analysis or processing or imagery. And then you can use the same uh, JSON object in this raster analysis tools to perform um, uh, to perform uh, custom raster analysis. Uh, Zcan will actually tell you more about this uh, in his example. And last, I want to mention that uh, besides the raster analysis API uh, that you can access directly through the uh, server REST directory page, there are also other clients uh, which can utilize the uh, raster analysis functionalities. Um, the portal and Rust analysis you set up um, can be directly accessed by ArcGIS Pro. We have this fu raster function uh, user interface that allows you to construct custom uh, Rust analysis workflows and then send the Rust analysis task to the portal that you sign in to the Pro. And you can also access Rust analysis services through the portal web map. And with desktop, with a uh, custom through processing environment settings, you can also utilize in the uh, distributed power of RAS analysis services. And also, uh, the ArcGIS API for Python, the new Python API that we released this year, also has some methods that you can use to directly access uh, the portals with RAS analysis capability enabled. So that's all about what RAS analysis is and how you can set it up to uh, use it for your processing. Next, I'll hand over to Zikan. He will show you uh, some examples. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, one way to consume uh, Rust analysis service is through its REST API. Rust analysis is quite powerful, but today I'm going to show you a small example how to do it to perform image processing on raster with a JSON raster function chain. Uh, 
I have an Apache server site with 10 server machines. They are all EC2 instances. Your PPT. Okay. Uh, I can oh, no. What is the uh, number of that? It's number. <coughs> no number. Oh, there's another one here. Just use this okay. One. What's the number of that? Okay, this one is much better. I have an active server site here with 10 server machines. There are all EC2 instances deployed on Amazon Web Service. It has been configured with Amazon S3 Cloud Raster Store. This site has all raster analysis related capabilities enabled. Raster analysis tool service for submitting and disseminating processing jobs to each server machines. Raster processing service for accepting and processing pixel block level data. And raster rendering service as a multi-tenant image service for displaying the result. The ArcGIS server site is connected, or we call it federated, to ArcGIS portal and acting as a portal raster analysis server. Now, let's submit a Rust analysis RESTful request through the server's REST service directory. I'm going to run a generate raster job. I will address how we can construct the parameters afterwards. Basically, we will input a uh, DEM data, mosaic DEM data in Charlotte area. We'll run slope function on top of it, and then we'll run a clip function to clip it to a very small area. Now we are at the REST service directory. There are many different tasks, actually. The generate raster is one of the most frequently used. You input an image and you get output an image with a JSON processing, raster function processing template. And there are also some other very powerful tools like calculate density. Uh, for example, you have crime instance feature service, and you can perform hotspot analysis on top of it. For example, you have the land cover or land change data in the state of California, and you also have a uh, California's counties polygon you can perform zonal statistics uh, to see the land use and land cover uh, conditions in each of the counties. And uh, I have prepared some parameters to run a generate raster job. You input a raster function and uh, specify what you want in the output, and you set what the input is, and all the other parameters are optional. I will talk about all of this later on. Let's submit this job first. OK. We'll check it back later on. So I, uh, all this uh, 
uh, all this analysis is performed in ArcGIS Enterprise, which is the portal plus ArcGIS server. The input is the function argument, actually. It's the parameters that will be used in raster function. Like, uh, you can put an input image service URL. You can also put a uh, portal's imagery layer item. Uh, in turn five, it can be an item or service within your organization or a public service. It cannot be a secure image uh, service or item in turn five, but we will support it in turn six. And for the output parameter, you can put a uh, existing portal's imagery layer item or corresponding portal's hosted image service URL as the output name. If you don't have that, you can just give it a new name for portal's imagery layer item and portal's hosted image service, and we will generate both for you. And uh, next, the Rust function is direct to you, uh, direct how to process the input and get the output. It's, it's a Rust function and, or a Rust function template, but need to be in JSON format. In 10.5, we support it in JSON format only. And uh, you can also, uh, for other parameters like raster properties, you can specify raster key, key metadata properties uh, to be set on output. You can set the processing environment, like the output raster spatial reference, in the context parameter. And for the token you will be used, since you are running under the RGS Enterprise, I, I think, uh, I presume you are using the authentication tier at the portal for ArcGIS. So the token should be generated under a second level publisher or administrator or customized roles with certain privileges enabled. Like uh, you need to be able to create, update, or delete portal contents. You need to be able to publish hosted, hosted features and you need to be uh, able to run in the Rust analysis. Once the job is submitted, Rust analysis will return a job ID with which you can keep querying the status of your job. It returns a premise rather than a rendered image like what a traditional image service does. And uh, once the job finished, you can access the output, both as uh, you can get the item ID, you can also get the host image service URL. That's, then let's go back to the job we submitted. I, I believe it's finished, it should be finished. Check the job details again. Okay, it succeeded in one minute, but I believe uh, one minute, three seconds, but I believe one minute is, is due to the network traffic, publishing service, uh, creating portal items, and uh, our powerful Rust analysis probably only takes three seconds in this circumstance. And uh, we can access in the output, like the image item ID and the URL of that uh, image, hosted image service. Let's say it. Uh, this is a hosted service we just created. Since this is just a tenant service of the raster rendering image service, uh, that service needs to spin up a little bit to show the result. And uh, if you open it in portal, this is the, this, uh, this is the result we just created. The Bank of American Stadium, which is the home part of Carolina Panthers. Yeah, it's like that. And also the image service. Now, I would like to address the kernel of Rust analysis request, the JSON Rust function chain. Yeah. 
We have large amount of out-of-box raster functions, range from basic band arithmetic functions, local or neighborhood functions, all the way towards customized Python raster functions. And our team has such presentation on Friday morning. And you, if you are interested, you can join that session. Uh, you can connect any of this together according to your specific workflow. This is like raster model builder or raster macro. If you have worked on raster with ArcGIS desktop, you probably know raster function template. And we call it RFT, which can be exported as XML file. And this is just a JSON represent of it. We have a reference here, which has all of the raster functions we supported. You can check it. Uh, after the session. For Rust analysis service, we support JSON uh, raster function processing template only. Uh, in Turn 5 Rust analysis server REST API, we are working hard to provide uh, like raster function template XML to JSON conversion tools or service in Turn 6. And we will directly support Rust function template portal atom in there as well. If you want to start from scratch to build a JSON Rust function chain, uh, I, this slide teach you how you can do it. It's pretty much like a reverse style, like uh, what I did in my previous demo. You first run a slope, then you run a clip raster function. So now you put clip function at first and all the parameters to support clip raster function. One of the parameters is raster. The name is raster. It's an input for clip function, but it can be the result of slope function. In this way, all the raster functions are nested and you can customize whatever you want. If such raster parameter is omitted, it will pick up the input raster in function argument you specify to run a rust analysis job. That's pretty much it. Uh, thank you for your attending. And uh, please take our survey. Thank you very much. Yeah, if you have any questions. Uh, we're here to answer. Yes. Well, uh, so the question is whether it requires the image server to be federated to portal uh, in order to use raster analysis. Um, actually, no. I mean, if you, if you can just have a image server, a license with image server extension license, um, it will, uh, you can actually manually start those services that I showed you earlier under the system folder and just directly use the REST endpoint of those services. But you, you, you should be aware that some of those syn uh, syntax may not work. For example, uh, in this example that Zikan showed, if you want the service to create the output uh, in the service for you and you just simply give a name uh, as the output, right? But if the server is not federated, this won't work. You actually have to manually create a service and give the URL as the output in the uh, Rust analysis service endpoint and then let it update the service. Because the way we um, support creation of uh, output image service and uh, its portal item is through the portal API. Right? So if you use that syntax for the, for the service to create the output image service item, uh, to create the output image service, and you will actually create both, create both the portal item and the image service that associate with that portal. But that syntax may not work if you just have image server. Right. Yes. I, I'm, I'm actually, so the question is, uh, in this is upcoming session, they'll be talking about AWS deployment, right? I think they, I don't know the detail of the contents they will provide, but I think they will mention the image server uh, cloud formation stack, at least, yeah. Yeah, 
Yes. Yeah, we actually, uh, it's part of our uh, product testing, right? We have to deploy our own uh, image server clusters and portals on both the Amazon and the Azure. These are the two platforms we support at the moment. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, you can come to talk to me. I mean, our island is over there with the imagery banners on top. Any more questions? Sorry about that. Thank you for attending. Thank you very much.